This monument has been built in memory of the 202 people that were killed in the Bali bombings of October 2002. Now, almost five years on from that tragic date, a new film has been made that tells the story not only of the victims, but also of the bombers and of the people of Bali. I'm Taymor Nabili, and on this edition of 101 East, we ask, is it still too soon to re-examine the Bali bombings? The filmmakers say its message is explicitly anti-terrorist, that its very title, The Long Road to Heaven, is intended as a denial of the idea that martyrdom is a shortcut to paradise. Survivors and the relatives of victims still have their concerns. Howell Davis reports on the controversy. The Bali of the holiday brochures is an exotic, tolerant haven. With a wide mix of religions and cultures already present, it's welcomed visitors from all around the world for decades. So much so that tourism is the dominant industry, accounting for 70% of the economy. But while the visitors have largely returned, the scars left by the attacks remain. And a new film about them is causing controversy. Guys, this is horrendous. I've never seen anything like it. The bombings of 2002 killed more than 200 people. Western holidaymakers in the bars and clubs of the island were the target. The scale and location of the explosions meant Indonesians inevitably died as well. People are burnt everywhere. Now a new film seeks to recreate the events before and after the devastating blasts. What happened? It just exploded, I saw it. I think a bomb. The filmmakers say they're trying to present a balanced view, not demonizing the plotters. The important thing in casting the terrorist group is how innocent they look. We look for a naive quality in them. We pick actors that do not look like stereotypical terrorists. But the attempt to show what motivated the group that planned and carried out the attacks is controversial, and the film has already been banned in Bali. Haji Bangbang was a member of a group that advised on whether the long road to heaven should be shown on the island. He's well placed to comment. His heroic role in organizing evacuations saved many lives. His experiences were even used I in the film. Need more white seats to cover the dead. Will you help me? While personally in favor of showing it, he says most thought not there enough time had passed, line. with wounds still it too raw. Others feared it could cause tension. There is this feeling with the police there that the film will cause a conflict between the Balinese people and their visitor. And maybe also religious conflict between Muslim and Hindus. On the surface, that might seem an unlikely prospect. But the 2002 bombings have inflicted severe mental as well as physical damage. And the indications are worrying. The suicide rate has rocketed. Yes, it doubled, yes. So it's very significant. Uh, we can speculate uh, about many reasons why, but uh, the main thing that happened, the main event that happened, were the bombings. Faced with such real traumas, the film for some survivors inevitably pales in the face of reality. Gatut Saranto suffered severe burns and spent a lengthy period in a coma after the blasts. Uh, in my opinion, it is, uh, it's only a movie. It's only uh, an illustration that what the victims feel, what the uh, story goes. Maybe there is an additional in a story, but I think it is not 100% the real story. But as the film's banning shows, such a measured reaction is not universal. And with more than 200 people killed less than five years ago, further arguments between the film's supporters and its opponents are inevitable. To discuss the film, The Long Road to Heaven, we've brought together three people. Peter Hughes is an Australian caught up in the 2002 bombings. He suffered burns over almost 60% of his body. And he's written a book about the experience back from the dead. 
Wilza Lubis is a co-producer of the film. She admits that the subject matter is sensitive and that it may upset some people in Australia, but argues it's up to the audience to decide. And Surya Saputra is a well-known Indonesian actor. He plays Hambali in the film, a man often described as the Osama bin Laden of Southeast Asia. To discuss the impact and the significance of this film, we've moved away from the symbolic and emotive environment of Kuta and come to somewhere much more neutral, somewhere much more in keeping with most people's perceptions of what Bali is all about. This is the Ulun Danu temple towards the center of the island. Peter, let me start with you. Is it too soon to be having this conversation, to be screening pictures like this? Oh, look, I, um, it's interpretation, I think. Uh, it is five years. I know that uh, there's been a couple of documentaries that have come out earlier. Uh, it's hard to say. I it's the dramatisation that people seem to be taking exception to. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I've seen part of it. I uh, must admit it is a, it's a bit raw in some areas, but, um, but in saying that um, I can handle it, uh, it's only my opinion, but um, I could imagine the victims' families uh, would definitely struggle with it. Well, so what was the motivation? for the film? Well, actually, it brings, uh, what is our motivation to bring this is to, uh, to make this film is to bring the humanity and together at the end of the tragedy. The humanity of everybody involved? Yeah, everybody. Including the bombers? Yes, the bombers, the victim and everybody. Tell us a little bit of how you see the humanity of the bombers. Well, actually, uh, we want to show people that uh, the terrorism is totally wrong. You know, uh, uh, it makes disaster to everybody, mm. to the victim, and the children, the family, and everybody. So we want to show that uh, everybody want to find peaceful in this world. So that is not right. Surya, you, you played a terrorist. Yeah. How, how do you get inside the skin of a part like that? Uh, in Indonesia, there there are some some uh, Muslim. Muslim uh, group that that is kind of radical and very uh, hard um, and I, I studied them I talked to them and then have a little little a slide of uh, background mm. of what what their minds are like how they think uh, why they think like this did, did that research and actually playing the part uh -huh. change how you perceive the event, how you think about things? Not at all. I still believe that we should all live, live life in peace and harmony and respect uh, differences, not force our, our belief uh, to others. Mm. I still believe that living in, living in peace and respecting others are the best way of living. Peter, this, this idea of, of portraying the terrorists as human beings, <coughs> uh, if not necessarily sympathetic or likable human beings, but at least people with motivations that we can understand is, is something that causes trouble uh, a lot of times, not just in this context, but in the broader context of the war against terror. Do you, do you think that it's, it's a mistake to consider these people as human? Oh, no, they're human. But um, us in Australia, I think we actually see terrorists as criminals. Uh, I think terrorism is just a, uh, it's a new word that's come out in the last 20 or 30 years. and. Um, we just believe that criminals uh, are everywhere in, around the world. And I, I, I'd like to believe that this change of terrorism, in, it's just treated like natural criminals. Uh, they are humans. They, uh, they bleed like most other normal people do. I just believe that they're, um, they're led by leaders. Uh, they're misguided. Um, and and they, they're quite selfish in their, in their beliefs. I mean, that being the case, you're still showing these terrorists uh, as being fairly ordinary people. They're, they're, they're not caricatures of evil people. They, they have understandable motivations. Yeah. Was it a concern for you that people would misunderstand your motive? Yeah, well, actually, we, we don't, we'll never let uh, anybody to do such cruelty like that. I mean, like the terrorists. But actually, at the end, we, we try to research that character, not their act, not to show their act, but only their character. Mm. Uh, with in this in this vellum so so we never we, we don't want uh, we don't want people misperceive perception in this vellum it's just the character so what have they done it's 
it's bad. That's actually one of the points that a number yeah. of people have made yeah. is the title Long Road to Heaven. Yes. They, they find yes. it somewhat offensive. But in yes. fact, mm -hmm. the point you're trying to make is that the martyrdom route is considered a short road to heaven and the, yeah. the film yeah. is trying to say there is no short road yep. to heaven. Yes, yep. exactly. Do you think that the rest of Indonesia and perhaps the rest of the Muslim world agrees with you? Because the, the, the subject of, uh, of, uh, of which we're speaking here uh -huh. seems to cause a great deal of division. I think uh, about the, the whole Muslim world agree with this, with this uh, term of, of peace because yes. Muslim itself uh, talks about peace, respecting women, and then uh, living harmony between other differences. So how does, how does it make you feel when, when events like this happen and the portrayal by the West is yes. simply yeah. terrorists? To be honest... We're shocked. Uh, we're we're really shocked. Me, me uh, individually, I'm, I'm angry of how, how certain parts of, of uh, people uh, portraying Islam uh, convince people that we're Islam, by doing this we're jihad. Yes. It's, it's wrong. Because that is not Islam. That, th this is my opinion. Mm -hmm. Islam is about respecting people and respecting other differences, other religions, other In opinions. We'll take a short break there. You're watching 101 East, where we're discussing the film The Long Road to Heaven. We'll be back in just a few minutes.